let's go ahead and on crude oil, let's take a look at the setup that we had this morning and what we're going to look for uh, the rest of the morning and every day this week. The same exact setup has been working for 33 years over and over again, and we want to continue to do the same setup. So let's take a look at what we want to do. We want to do a left to right analysis when we log in in the morning. And we, I'm going to record this video this morning. We put it at daytradingthefutures.com. So for your review, um, we had several big setups last week. We recorded the setups. If you are new to the system, go to daytradingthefutures.com and click recent videos. And uh, that will really help you get muscle memory on watching how we get into these trades. There's only two ways we buy and two ways we sell using these three charts, Renko charts, next to each other. I'm going to go over that right now. So the first chart, we have a long Renko bar. It's a longer um, brick size Renko bar, which is a 9 sim. We call it a sim Renko bar. That's what a Renko bar is called, a, a symmetry Renko bar. Like I said, the unique thing about this is there's a trend filter built in. So when you get all this volume coming from all these algorithms, basically markets are pushed around by algorithms and high-frequency traders now, hedge funds and prop firms. This will pick it up. So we're going to know what side of the market that these traders, and professional traders, algorithms, hedge funds, prop firms are pushing the market. And all we're going to do is we're going to buy and sell retracements with that overall trend. Very simple. It doesn't matter what market you look at. We're going to do the exact same way every day. So the best way to do it is this. You log in, and I don't care what market you look at. If you trade the NASDAQ futures, the S&P, or you trade any market whatsoever, this is crude. We show crude and gold in the room. Let's say you trade it on your own, any given market. You want to look at this chart first because you want to stay on the side of the bias on this chart. So if I look at this chart, I know right away that crude oil is in a downtrend. And I don't want to take any buys against this overall trend because this is going to allow me to get short the market, I mean, get in the direction of the trend of the market and get short in the market trading my arrows over here on my Fibonacci retracement arrows. So as long as I stay on the side of this trend chart, I know that I'm in the overall push of the market. And that's very key for your success because it's not going to miss any big trends in the market, any breakouts, any big moves. When, when you see these 80, 100 tick moves, this is going to pick it up. Okay, so the best way to do it is we have three moving averages on here. Now, moving averages are absolutely worthless by nature because they're terrible for support and resistance because you don't know which one they're going to stop at. And they're also terrible for overall crossover systems. So we use it for trend direction only. That's how we're going to use moving averages. Can we use them for trend direction? Yes. Let me put the pointer up here so I'll show you what I'm talking about. I have three MAs. The weakest part of the market is going to be when you're below all three MAs. In other words, all three are crossed down, and the open versus close or the body of the candle, that's the open versus close, not the wicks, not the little stem right there. The stem is the high and low of the bar. The most important part of that candle is the body of the candle. That's the open versus close. That's what you want to look at. If I get the open versus close below all three MAs, I'm in the weakest part of the market, meaning they're trying to really mark the market down. Vice versa, if I'm above all three MAs, they're trying to mark the market up. So when can you tell if the market is going to start a downtrend? You don't need to be below all three or above all three. That's just the weakest part. When you're going to tell, you can look at my small MA, which is a small, thin white line we have these templates already built in for you if you want to plug and play on your own ninja trader when you get a 90 percent candle close below or above my smaller ma 90 percent candle 90 percent candle close meaning the body of the candle the body of the candle is closing below that small ma you have a possible trend and typically trades are going to happen right after that candle closes 90 percent candle below my small MA above or below. You typically get a retracement trade that comes up against my small MA, like here, this is where the arrows fired this morning. That was an arrow short right there. 
that's going to be your best time to get short the market. And you can see we have a follow through. The other time we're going to try to get short the market is, is when you start seeing space between the small MA right there and the body of my candle, we have a hard trend down. You see it started right here. See the little space, larger space, larger space, larger space. When that body of that candle gets up and touches that small MA, you're going to look for an arrow to fire over here to get short again on another trend trade. So this is a trend chart. What we want to do is we just want to keep get short the market in the direction of this overall trend market. If I look at gold and I put it beside it, are we in an uptrend or a downtrend in gold? Same thing. Look at gold right now beside crude. It's very easy to see what we're doing. On gold, the trend started also. The downtrend started way up here. 90% candle close, and it never closed 90% candle above. It's been a downtrend since midnight last night. So since midnight last night, we've been in a downtrend. There's your 90% candle close. It has never closed above it by 90% candle. That's small MA. This is about fit, uh, around 70% candle. I'm talking the edge of the candle has got to be below. You can see the edge over here on crude, the edge. That's how you can see if it's a 90% candle. It has a little edge to it. You see a, a, the big portion part of the body that's not a 90% close. So if I look at uh, gold, the short opportunities on the arrows, here, called the high of the market. Here, my Fibonacci, called the, called the high of the market. Here, look at where the wicks are going in, called the high of the market. We just had a trade a short here a second ago, and we'll go over in a second, on gold. So our bias has been short on gold also because of the retracement. So you got to stick to the bias of the market. Now, the good thing is, is you see how the space on gold right there also happens, our space. Then you get the retracement up. The candle's still going to be, you're not going to see these wicks like this. If it closes, you missed the trade already. When this candle gets up and ticks up against this MA, or this candle butts up against this MA, that's when you possibly have a setup because that's when the arrow is going to fire. You can't wait till the wick forms and then all of a sudden it closes because the arrow already fired. So in other words, when you get this candle coming back up and retrace into 12.0120 or 71.91, look for the arrow to fire for a continuation. Now, that's how we do it, the trend first. Let me show you how we do this. It's a very simple, easy way to do it. If I'm in a downtrend, I only got two opportunities to go short or two opportunities to go long. So that's the trend chart. Put that beside there. That's the trend chart. Easy to read. You're going to know the exact bar that starts that overall trend. Now, remember, the weakest part of the market is if you're below all three MAs. We're in the weakest part of the market. Now, that's a trend. Now, what is the chart next to it? That's my nine. These templates, like I said, are already set up. If you do lease the program on any market, it's plug and play. This chart's already set up for you. You just plug in the symbol up here, and it changes all these charts automatically for you. Let's go to the next chart. It's a left to right analysis. So I know the trend's down. That's not good enough. Show me the area where I need to buy and sell. The next chart I have is I have what's called my SIM dot chart. This chart's very important to find setups. There's only two ways you need to learn how to buy and sell off, my, off, off this chart. Uh, there's only two areas to buy and sell. If I'm in a downtrend, which I am already, I know I'm in a downtrend right here. I can't take any buys. There's no buys. Unless I get back inside the small MA by 90% candle close, my bias is short. I'm smarter than my trading opponent. I know my trend filter is already built into this Rinko bar. Rinko bars don't have trend filters built into it. Minute bars do not. Okay? You can't look at the uh, red and green candles on minute bars, share bars, uh, range bars. They don't help. But I got a trend filter built in into this. So I know I'm in the right direction of the market. I know I'm not going to counter trend trade the market. So I'm in a downtrend. What's next? I only have these SIM dots on my next Renko bar. It's a smaller Renko bar. This brick size is 5 SIM. So now I got a smaller Renko bar trying to find the spot in the market where I want to go short, where I want to see an arrow fire short to get short this market. So how do I want to do it? Very simple how I want to do it. I want to look for one of two things. I want to look for the market system in a downtrend to break 
symmetry dots right here. I have sim, sim blue dots, sim red dots. If I'm in a downtrend, I got two ways to short. I want to break through sim dots. I want to retest sim dots. And I want to look what's called an ABC short or a 1, 2, 3 short, a pattern short. So here's the easy way to do it. I was telling a trader yesterday, which I was talking with, is that when you see a break right there, just draw a horizontal line. You're going to see it close below a body of the candle. When you see a body of the candle or even a 90% close, here's a 90% close, and here's a whole body, you're looking for a, the green bar to come in. A green Barinko bar tells you you have, got, you have novice, amateur, counter-trend traders coming in the market. Those are the traders that use divergence, that use stochastics, that use the moving average convergence divergence, all these crazy lagging indicators. They think the market's going to bounce. And we want those, those traders getting the market. We want to prey off those traders. Those are called the wrongly positioned traders. So when it turns green, you know green bar is going to push back up. So we're push back up, push back up, push back up. On this push back up, I want to look for an arrow short over here on my what? I want to look for an arrow short here on my three sim Renko. My three sim Renko, I want to see an arrow short on this retest. Okay, retest. And you want to see negative market delta below here, which I'll show you in a second. So this is one opportunity to go short at that retest of that bar. Negative market delta comes in here. Red reversal bar, we get a nice trade. Now, that's one way you get short. The other way is this. So let's say that we never get an arrow that fires off here or no negative market delta down here to get short the market. The only other way we can do it is try it for a V-top. If this market does what? If this market, instead of stopping at uh, reversing there, it comes up and comes within two ticks. It can't exceed that symmetry dot. It just can't close a whole body close above. But if it comes within two ticks minimum, I want to look for negative market delta or I want to look for an arrow short to get short this market on a V-top. That's the only two ways you're going to short the market on any given market right there. It's either going to break, retest my symmetry dots with trend for an ABC short or it's going to give me a V-top at my symmetry dots. It's the only two possible ways that you're going to get short the market. Let me show you how it works right here on gold this morning. It worked perfect. So we had this here short on crude. Now, crude had another short right here. It closed a 90% candle close. Well, let me show you. 90% candle close. Broke symmetry dots right here. There's your 90% candle close. You want a whole body or 90% candle close. It retests right to my symmetry dots. There's your wick where it retested. Touch the exact tick. I had another short opportunity there to go short the market. Crude is now two for two on a break retest of symmetry this morning. So the symmetry dots put you in a place where you know where you can buy and sell. So there's only two shots you got at it to short the market or buy the market any given day using this Simrinko chart. The easy way to do it, like I was telling a, a trader yesterday, just watch the sim dots. You're either going to break retest sim. Or you're going to retest sim in a downtrend. It's that easy. And the nine sim set the whole thing up. If I'm looking at gold, like I just showed you, check, take a look at gold. Here's my gold trade. My gold trade's in a downtrend. So my five sim dots, look, look how they position themselves. What I say, the only two ways you can short the market. There's only two ways you short the market. It nailed it. Absolutely love it. Retest the symmetry. Right here. Retest the symmetry. Ray did it, retest the symmetry, or a break retest the symmetry. Arrow fired. Thanks for coming to work. That's only two ways you trade. It worked again today, this morning on gold again. There's where you have it. It's the break retest is what you're going to look at. You want the break, you want the retest, or you want the re you just want the retest on a V-top. The retest is up here too in a downtrend. That's how you trade any given market, any given day. But you got to stick to the bias. Now, what happens is if I retest, let's say, when do I use this three sim? That's how I use the five sim. The five sim sets the trades up. Look at this. Five sim sets the trade up. 
Look on Golden Crude. It set crude up this morning. It broke retested right there on crude this morning. Broke retested. Broke retested. And on gold, retested, broke retested, right? What about the three sim? When can I use that? When can I use the three sim? Let me bring it here on gold so you can see it on gold. It just happened. On gold, I just showed you right here when a downtrend. What did I tell you the best time to look for trades? When you get space. When you get space on my open versus closed candle right here. Now look, here's a gold chart. We're in a downtrend every since. 130 this morning when you get space right here when you get space pop this up very easy to for you to find spots if you do this technique you're gonna thank me for years and years and years to come we got a lot of long-term three to five year traders that just love seeing this setup that make the ticks in this room inside now we got traders that don't even log in here and log that trade all these other markets and they love this setup you just pay attention when you get space between my small MA and the open versus close, this is professional trading. This is not amateur trading. Amateurs trade the highs and lows of the wicks of the market. I educate you to trade the open versus close. That's order flow. That's the body of the candle with this trend filter built in. There is your body of your candle. Look at the space between the MA and the body of the candle when it closes. That tells you look for the next retracement. Look for a retracement up into that small MA. That's where the arrow fired this morning. Here again, watch. There's space in between the MA. They're trying to mark the market down. Open versus close. When that candle tick, 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 ticks back up, that buy the candle comes up, butts up against that small MA. The arrow fired right there. Then it went down. Tick, 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 all the way back down and close right like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to time it this way. You're going to see a very the open versus close close away from it. You're going to watch the market tick back up. Tick, 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 tick. The body of the candle is touching my MA. It's not closed yet. You're going to look for the arrow to fire. You're going to look for the arrow to fire. Where did it fire? 102 and a half. See where it fired right here? See where the arrow fired? Look right here. Look where the arrow fired. One oh two and a half right there. Look where the arrow fired right there. That is just pure order flow. That's a Fibonacci retracement arrow that fired on a trend chart retracement with trend. Look how they matched up. Now how it's going to work is this. How it's going to work is you're going to see the trend chart, once you see space, it's going to open down here. If it gets close to that small MA and it's going to be tick, 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 you'll see the body of the candle, red, 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 and then it'll butt up against it. At the high of that bar, you're going to look, for, when it's touching that small MA, you're going to watch for an arrow to fire. Come on, fire right there. Boom, fired. Right at the high, it fired. Right at the, right at the close of this candle, it fired. You want to enter the trade right here, your stop loss is now two ticks above that swing high. Put a hard 13 tick stop in if you're trading crude or gold. And then lower that stop to two ticks above the swing high. Typically on a three sim chart, you're looking at around nine to eleven tick stop. You're risking ninety to one hundred and ten dollars per one contract. Maximum risk for a possible six, seven, eight hundred dollar trade. Eight to one. Sometimes we'll get ten to one. Ten to one reward to risk. But that's how you trade that. You don't wait till this candle goes up and close all the way back down. When that candle, the trend chart, is ticking up, button up against that smaller MA, when it's ticking live, you look for an arrow to fire, you pop in the trade. And that's all we do. That's all we do. Every single day. There's only two ways to get long and two ways to get short. Now, what about my, before you shut that off, Gerald, what about my delta chart? How do we use delta? Use delta, that small chart all the way in the bottom, for, for order and balance confirmation. What does that mean? What it means is, is that when I get an arrow that fires, or I'm butting up against symmetry dots to get short, even without the arrow, if I get negative mark of delta, it's showing me that there's sellers that are overtaking the buyers, or buyers overtaking the sellers. So 
what I want to do is I want to see delta on a retracement turn negative market delta. So if I'm looking at the high where the market is trying to find a higher low, I want to see delta come in and confirm. I want a negative market delta. So let's say this is symmetry dots on a break retest. Those are, those are your sim dots. You want delta to show a negative market delta down here. You want it to be a negative market delta. If the three sim fires at Fibonacci arrow, you want negative market delta to confirm. You want a negative number. Negative 89, 89 is a pretty good, decent amount. Negative 156 is even better over here. It show, it's confirming that the market has an order imbalance between the bid and the ask. So not only do I look at the Fibonacci retracements, I know if the market is showing an order imbalance. Okay, you can use that to assist you on a retest or a break retest by confirming the market is rolling over. Now, do you need every single bar to be red, 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 green, green, green? No. Because what you can do is this. You can start watching your 5 sim Simrenko bar or your 9 sim Simrenko bar for runners. What does that mean? If I got short up here on this retest, I got short on this retest, I know that I want to scale 50% of my position no matter what at the two ticks in front of my symmetry. But I'm still runner, if I got short here and the live fill would have been right around 12.07, the low of this bar. If I'm down here and I scale at 71.97, if I'm short at 7 or 12. 7207, then I want to scale 50% at 7197, two ticks in front of symmetry. Watch your red red candles. It keeps you in trades. So if I'm trading multiple contracts, I can take 50% out of symmetry, but watch your candles on your five sim. So if I'm trading six contracts, scale three, you don't have to scale another contract until you get to the second set of symmetry, which is usually 50 ticks away, or watch your watch your uh, sim chart. It's got a trend field built in it. <clears throat> watch your candles. It didn't turn green candle to there, so your out would have been the highest bar, 81. So now you just took an another contract for if you do multiple contracts from 07 down to 81, over $250 trade. And then you can hold even more multiple, con if you hold <clears throat> additional contracts, watch your 9 sim. <clears throat> Still hasn't ch changed colors on a green candle yet. So you can scale contracts based upon these trend, this trend filter also, right? Because look at gold too. It's been short all morning since 4 or 3.30 this morning. So if you have it short on your long, my, my long trend chart, my long brick, brick size, it's saying keep short. So your runner should still be running. <clears throat> the last 25% of your runner should still be running. You should still be short at 12.04. We're down to 11.99. All right, that's how you can keep runners running. So we use the combination of those charts, trend first, symmetry second to find the break retest, other retest, arrow, Fibonacci arrows to time the entry with small stops, Mark a delta to confirm the arrow. It's not hard. It's very simple, easy to execute, easy to understand, left to right analysis. Now, what I tell traders all the time, I like to find out if the market's hot or cold. The trend chart will tell you if it's hot or cold. Now, a lot of traders say, hey, what about market profile then? Why, why do you show market profile? I, sh I show market profile because it gives me confluence. Market profile gives me confluence. So the last trade was a break retest on market profile on gold and a break retest on crude. You can, what I suggest you do is I educate traders, learn to trade these three charts first. Trend chart, sim chart to set the area up, arrow chart to pop you in. You can do very well without even knowing how to trade market profile. However, market profile, the far left chart is very dynamic. You'll see it on my videos all the time. What happens to the market profile is it can lose with a break retest on these trades. Meaning gold, it broke retested right here on a break ABC short 
two of my most important market profiles is a thin green line, thin red line, or the thick green, blue, and red. If it breaks retest those levels and the arrow fires with symmetry, you got confluence. You're in the most optimal spot you can be in the market, and it's typically going to be your best trade of the day. That's how you can start learning how to trade the system. But I would work in market profile last because a lot of traders get confused by it. My longer-term traders have been here one, two, three, four, five years inside and outside this room. They know how to trade it with the Renko bars because you use it for confluence. If Because it's two different indicators. Market profiles work since 1985. My profiles are dynamic. I don't use a standard 30-minute novice market profile, what everybody else does. I use an institutional profile, and it can catch some of them sometimes to the tick on a break retest. It's pretty amazing. But that's how we do it, left-to-right analysis.